we bring together Missouri instructional leaders to share their experiences, grow professional relationships, and build curriculum and instruction skills. My name is Valerie Montgomery. I'm one of the hosts here on the network. And our guests today are some people who play a crucial role in shaping the way that Missouri educators bring nature and conservation into their classrooms. And we are thrilled to have Mary Beth Factor and Wendy Parrott, who are curriculum coordinators from the Missouri Department of Conservation. Welcome Mary Beth and Wendy, and thank you so much for being here. We're really excited to be here and share with you um, the Discover Nature Schools program that Missouri Department of Conservation provides. Um, and we're hopeful that you might already know about it. Um, we want to share free resources that are available to all schools in Missouri, all students, teachers, um, training that supports it, grants and materials and field experiences that also support that. So before we share all of our information, we also want to know from you um, what role you play, what grades you work with, because what we have available is K through 12 resource, or I'm sorry, pre-K through 12 resources. And we want to make sure we share items that are most relevant to you. So if each of you could go off mute and tell us who you are, what you do, um, and that will help us know for sure how to best connect what's available to what your needs are. I can go. Um, my name is Vanessa Cochran. I am a curriculum director down here and up here in Versailles, I guess, depending on where you are. And uh, I work with pre-K through 12 um, district wide. Um, I can go. I'm Callie Mack. I think Kelly uh, froze on us. Oh. I can go. Can... I'm Tracy Evans, and I work in Lebanon. I'm the curriculum director, uh, pre K 12. Kelly, do you want to try that again? I, I don't know if it was um, for everyone, but for me, my I, I think you froze for us. Yeah, I'm having a few issues with my internet, so I'm sorry. I'm with ICEV. I'm retired, uh, Missouri, used uh, conservation in my classroom, and I'm just curious on what's new. I can go next. I am Sarah Stribble. I am the elementary principal at Cole County R5 Schools in Eugene. Except everybody. Excellent. Thank you for sharing. Um, it will help us We've got all grades represented, which is fantastic. So we will share um, all resources available. Um, so Mary Beth and I share the role of curriculum coordinator for the Discover Nature Schools program across the state. And we just are excited to let you know um, some of our resources have been around for quite a while, some are newer, and just let you know what's available. So we are part of Missouri Department of Conservation. And within the department, we have several different goals. Um, one is to protect and manage our fish force and wildlife, which is probably fairly familiar to all of you um, as the role MDC plays through conservation areas across the state, providing free access for all citizens to access nature. We also, um, serve the public and we provide different activities 
for um, getting people outdoors. We offer nature centers and public programs um, and help people appreciate the resources. And finally, we provide opportunities for all citizens to learn about our resources. So by doing that, we're able to connect to pre-K students. And so our role is really that educational realm and making sure there's ways for teachers to get kids outside, learning about nature, learning what they're able to tangibly engage in, not resources that um, learning about the Arctic or the desert, places kids may never visit. So within MDC's mission, we have different goals and an organizational structure. So those who are taking care of the resource, um, making sure that we have healthy ecosystems here in Missouri would include our fish, forest, and wildlife professionals, our science branch who are continually researching and learning more about um, resources here in Missouri, and then our protection staff. Um, Mary Beth and I fit within the engagement sphere, um, all of our education branch who reach out to the public and make sure there's ways for any citizen to engage in our resources, as well as our communication staff who produce magazines. Hopefully you know about Explore and the Missouri Conservationists. There's a variety of publications that help support um, learning in general, making nonfiction libraries in your um, classrooms, but also um, opportunities to subscribe to those resources and then our policy and legislation. So when um, our state government is meeting, we have staff there engaged in what's happening. And finally, we have um, our business end that uh, we all are part of the budget and administration, our HR staff, and maintaining the buildings, the resources across the state. Hello, can everyone hear me? I'd just like to double check my audio. Okay. I was having issues last week. We have to call in through uh, Zoom on the web, unfortunately, and my computer was informing me about a low bandwidth. So, Callie, I can understand exactly where your issues were coming from earlier. If at any point in time I start cutting out, just let me know. I will try to make adjustments as I go along. My name is Mary Beth Factor. I've been with the department since 2018. Previously, I was um, an elementary one through six teacher. My bachelor's is in um, elementary one through six from UMKC. And I bounced around across the state into the different classrooms. Uh, and then after that, I wound up getting my master's degree in environmental education up in Minnesota. And then I was able to come back to my home state and land a great job at Missouri Department of Conservation. And my passion is connecting students to the outdoors through science. Um, there are certainly different ways that we can do that. The curriculum that's offered within Discover Nature Schools is unique. Um, after teaching in Minnesota, as well as teaching in Wisconsin, this is something that's not offered across the nation. Uh, and not only is it not offered across the nation, it's not offered for free. So this is something that's a very neat opportunity that I didn't even know existed until I moved back to the state of Missouri. Um, if you are familiar with Last Child in the Woods, uh, it is a great read. If you are not familiar with it, I highly recommend it. Uh, in 2008, Richard Louv coined the term nature deficit disorder. And essentially what this is, is a child's disconnect to nature. And his very first introduction into the book is a quote from a child that states, I don't like going outside. There are no outlets out there. And so that just kind of gives you the state. <laughs> <I know. laughs> Valerie, I'm looking at your face right now. That gives you the state of where we're at in regards to disconnect. And the greater disconnect we have, the more issues we have in terms of childhood obesity, issues with vitamin D deficiencies, which is incredible because vitamin D is very easy to get just by going outside. Uh, and we're actually having I mean, issues with scurvy and scurvy's on the rise. And so there's a lot of childhood diseases or I shouldn't even say childhood diseases, but even previous historical diseases that are coming back. And a lot of it is because of that disconnect in nature. Um, and it's contributed to a lot of different ways. Um, it could be from uh, fears. It can be from misconceptions about nature. It can just be from a variety of different things. But the idea is to try to get children outside again, feel comfortable being outside and also extending that into our families. So that's incredibly important. 
So please make sure that you check out Last Child in the Woods. Um, it is extremely informative. Yeah, other things that we want to point out to you, the benefits of connecting students to the outdoors. And this graphic actually comes from the Children in Nature Network, and there is a web address on there. And you're welcome to pull these, uh, this information up. Um, all of these statements on are actually connected to studies that had been done. Uh, so in terms of nature and access to nature and being outside in nature, it does improve act performance. That's actually connected to five different studies, and these are conducted across uh, the United States. And they have been anywhere from the early 2000s until uh, 2020. So a lot of these studies are new and they are current. And so we like to pay attention to this kind of data whenever we're promoting December Nature Schools, because not only is there a better academic performance on the rise, but we've also seen enhanced attention. We actually take this own data from our Discover Nature Schools and we get reports. For the most part, a lot of people saying that there are increased attendance and there's increased or decrease in behavior issues in their classes. Um, we do see an increase in engagement enthusiasm with our garden and first grade curriculum. Typically, we had a 70% increase in children's interest in Missouri fish for wildlife after using curriculum. And not only that, there was an 82% increase in students using their schoolyard. And that's in the first year alone. So this is very exciting stuff for us to be able to see that Discover Nature Schools promotes the outside usage of science and also those teachers not only are able to take their students outside, but it's with purpose it's to to bring that science knowledge into real life settings, authentic settings. And so it's not just conducting science experiments in the classroom, it's not just doing book work, it is literally engaging them into what is right outside of their door. Uh, nature can also improve health and well being. So we do have an increase, see an increase in physical activity, of course, with students going outside and engaging with those uh, great benefits of being outside, as well as social and emotional. Uh, well-being. Children are in generally happier. Uh, with our curriculum in particular, we promote a lot of group work, and so that's where a lot of those improved relationship skills uh, occur. So in terms of our curriculum overview, we have um, two spheres that we try to connect together into the middle. So we have our conservation education goals. In conservation education, uh, we really try to promote the knowledge about nature within the state of Missouri. We really try to promote outdoor skills. Outdoor skills might be identification of different types of trees outside. I don't know about you. I grew up in a family where my father thought all green trees that stayed green all year long were pine trees. That is not true. We have other trees outside that are not pine trees that remain green all year round. Um, and so it's just opening up that level of knowledge. And it's also opening up the idea of, hey, we know the pollinators, the insects are decreasing across the state of Missouri at rapid rates and across the world at rapid rates. And so it's taking our civic action and our civic duty to try to help promote better habitat structure for that. And also, again, connecting science, cause and effect. Uh, again, building that appreciation and then also participation. On the other side of those, their school curriculum. So you see our outer spheres. And so our outer spheres within that are social studies. We do connect to mathematics in a way of where it's comprehensive assist. So it's not necessarily dictating, okay, well, what is two plus two? It's, okay, okay so now we've added this together. Let's take that, analyze it, put it in our graph where the students are looking at that in their early childhood years, or maybe they're looking at line charts, or maybe they're getting introduced to scatter plots. But then they're starting to understand math is not something that's disconnected. Math is involved in science. Uh, and then also we have a lot of other facets in terms of literature. That again is comprehensive uh, in social studies. Even in our second grade, the students are identifying different parts um, of Missouri and the state of Missouri, and they're looking at geographic regions. They're looking at differences across geographic regions. They're starting to understand what do what does the green parts of a map look like as compared to the blue parts, and what is that? What does that tell us? So we're starting to understand map reading, which is a part of social studies. So all of this is connected into our Discover Nature Schools curriculum, so it can be comprehensive. In terms of meeting those standards, supporting and aligning, uh, we do support and align the Missouri Learning Standards as well as the Next Generation Science Standards. 
Uh, a lot of that is connected into our life sciences, but our kindergarten, first and second grade curriculum, we've also connected it to all of the science standards. So that includes earth and space, and it also includes physical, and then we really have pulled out the engineering and technology standards, which we will share with you shortly. By the way, if any of you have any questions, please feel free either to come off of mute or share your question in chat, and we'd be very happy to answer as we are moving along. The key elements in regards to this Governor Nature Schools curriculum, what makes it so unique and different is because, number one, it is Missouri-based. Wendy had earlier had alluded to a curriculum uh, perhaps being more worldly-based, very valuable. But students can identify more wildlife in Africa than they can in the state of Missouri. They can identify more Pokemon characters, which I understand is not a part of Hoot and Mifflin or a part of any sort of curriculum at all, but they can identify up to 150 Pokemon characters and they can't even identify 10 common Missouri bird species. And so the idea is being able to look at patterns, cause and effect, observations, all of these are skills that can be practiced within this curriculum. So we are bringing it to their doorstep. It does support uh, or align to the Missouri Learning Science Standards or the next generation science very, very student uh, centered it is very collaborative in every single lesson and promotes hand equipment um, and then we also offer uh, grants or teacher kits and that is for classroom materials as well as transportation reimbursement and we will talk about that a little bit more uh, shortly so again this is a very unique program um, and we have uh, over a thousand schools participating right now in Discover Nature School across the state. In terms of our, our overview, these are our different curriculums. Um, if you are familiar with our K through two Nature Unfolds, you will notice that it is not up there right now because that will be retired within the next two years. And that is simply because we have now broken out kindergarten, first grade, and second grade into their own grade-specific science curriculums that aligns to all of the Missouri Learning Science Standards and Next Generation Science Standards. So we are going to be removing that. So today we will not talk about um, Nature Unfolds uh, simply because Nature uh, Discover Nature School second grade will be coming available in the fall of 2024. Um, Mary Beth, can I interrupt for a second? All right. Sometimes Thanks. you're... And when is going to go ahead and talk with us. Sorry. Uh, sometimes your audio, That's okay. audio is getting choppy. I wonder if, if um, not that we don't want to see your beautiful face, but I wonder if you turn your camera off, if that will kind of help your bandwidth. Let's see if that okay. makes a difference. I don't want to miss what you're saying because I know it's um, vital to understanding this. Yeah, right. absolutely. Well, keep me posted, Valerie, if um, I need to make any more adjustments over here. I appreciate the heads up. Will do. So Mary Beth gave a big picture overview of the Discover Nature Schools curriculum. Um, so starting at the bottom um, with pre-K, we have a Nature Revealed unit. And this is very hands-on engaging lessons. It's organized by season, starting with summer. So um, it could be very easy for a teacher just to open it up and start whatever season there you're in and just get engaged and get kids learning about what's happening in Missouri during that time of year. There's also a way it's organized in the back through thematic unit. So it could be used either way. If you're doing um, a study on mammals, you could easily use lessons out of order and just pull out those different mammal type activities or air and wind or weather or camping, a wide variety. Um, it is correlated to the project construct and early uh, learning goals. And Desi asked us, if we would share the curriculum and they are now recommending it as a supplemental curriculum on their website. So that is really exciting. Mary Beth's gonna share that. So you can see that on the DESI website. Um, and we're very happy that they see that. So approved preschool curriculums, there's a list of comprehensive, which this is not, but the supplemental 
uh, Nature Revealed is listed right there. So this is a really good way to align with DESI goals and get um, fun, engaging activities for teachers. And in connecting with the teachers, uh, to get the curriculum, one way is to reach out to your conservation educator. Across the state, there's 29 different CEs or conservation educators. So everybody has a local contact. And depending on where you're at, um, you can easily find that person and reach out and say, hey, I'm interested in training for me or for my team. And you can get often three hours of clock, uh, three clock hours for that training. The training is always free. The resources are always free. Everything we provide is funded by a dedicated sales tax. So you, your families, everyone's already paid into it. And so you're just getting back what you've already contributed towards. So one example of, or these are two different examples of lessons within Nature Revealed. The frog and toads, you can say in the upper right-hand corner says 14 and there's a sun. So the sun shows you it's a summer lesson, which makes sense because that's when we're gonna find the most frogs and toads active. Um, you can see by the pictures here that they're gonna be learning, it's a story, it's kind of a poem and students are learning about the life cycle. And so they're learning how the um, frog eggs and toad eggs then metamorphosize, though we're just saying they turn into tadpoles and those tadpoles become frogs. And then the coyote might wanna to try to eat one. Um, so it's, it's helping kids understand a big world. Kids can listen. Um, as the story's read, there's multiple pages of these storyboard characters and they can listen and add their storyboard in as it's time they can retell the story and then we have manipulatives like the bird puzzle and you can see in that upper right hand corner there's a snowflake so that's lesson three in the winter time uh, winter's an ideal time for kids to see birds because there aren't leaves on trees um, i know there aren't as many birds in the winter but Often they're going to be at theaters, we can attract them easily, and it's just a really fun way for kids to get engaged. One last thing is um, there's a family calendar of activities to connect families to the curriculum. All right, so that's pre-K. Well, Mary Beth's going to share about kindergarten. Okay, thank you, Wendy. Uh, kindergarten and Bears Through the Seasons is a newer curriculum. It was released in August of 2022. Uh, it is fully aligned to all of the Missouri Learning st Standards in Science, including physical, earth and space, life, and engineering. And then similar to what Wendy was discussing with Nature Revealed, we have seasonal learning experiences. Uh, so the students are pretending that they are bears, and they are going through a year as they would as a bear. And so they're creating bear headbands. There's bear puppets that they get in a teacher kit. Um, and then they get to create a little den for their bear puppet, which is a part of their engineering. They look at plant and animal needs. Maybe they go outside and they look for acorns, which is a big thing that bears will collect in the fall. Um, and then they're also even exploring concepts of pushes and pulls um, in terms of those physical science standards of forces and motion. So the students particularly love it and they really like being able to have that role play. This is an example of what our uh, kindergarten sample activity can look like from the student guide. So you can see it's fully colored and illustrated. There are different components to it. Uh, this is what we call our guiding question. It's what lives in my schoolyard. So that lets the students know this is what we are going to be exploring today. And we do have a notice and a wonder. And so the students, they're starting to learn to ask questions and they're starting to wonder to, or they're starting to also document observations. Uh, they are getting introduced to different read-togethers, which is built into the student guide. These student guides are all free. Teachers can order them in quantities that are enough for their classroom or even a little bit older over that for turnover. And this is an example of our science notebook. So here's a great example of a math concept that's put into place. Students are going outside and they are documenting the types of plants that they see versus the types of animals that they might see. And then they tally mark that. And the big question is, why do we see more plants than we do animals? And so that starts talking about plants. Usually we have more of a plethora of plants because they have to be able to support our animals. So it's a very simple concept, but this is a really nice way for students to be able to start to analyze that data that they're collecting. 
Uh, and this is an example of at the end, a quick evaluation formative assessment for those students to understand what belongs in my school yard. Hopefully they're probably not going to circle the otter unless you are a very lucky school. Um, but they're probably going to circle things like the butterfly and they have to be able to justify and talk about why they would see certain things. All right, Wendy, would you like to go ahead and talk about first grade? Yeah, so the first grade is very similar to the kindergarten unit that Mary Beth just shared about. Um, there are eight units and within each unit there are four, two to four lessons. And um, so kids are learning science again, just like kindergarten, all science standards are covered, both Missouri and next generation science standards. So they're noticing changes in weather, they're finding out about animal communication, um, birds and what they eat. Um, everything is laid out to go through the school year. So in springtime, this time of year, April, May, they're going to be learning about plant and animal offspring as that's happening in the world around us, making those observations. And just like kindergarten, the student guide is free and it includes, um, again, that investigative que or guiding question and draw it where kids are able to share what they're learning in their science notebook, read togethers. There's fun facts to connect what happens in Missouri um, into the learning and the science notebook again. All these lessons end with uh, claims, evidence, and reasoning evaluation. All right, for uh, second grade is a new one Mary Beth's gonna share about. Mary, that's your muted. Thank you. <laughs> uh, so this is our second grade life and land in Missouri. Um, it will be available in fall of 2024. Uh, we wish we could give a exact month of when that's going to be available, but just due to uh, printing and development, um, we, we just have to say fall of 2024. Um, so this was written by a... Uh, a curriculum coordinator out of Columbia Public Schools, as well as a teacher out of Licking um, uh, our eight school district, as well as by yours truly, the two folks that are here, and then a few of our conservation educators, and it was also reviewed by our MDC science staff. It is divided into six units. We have 21 lessons total, total uh, and we do follow just like first grade and kindergarten, the 5E model of instruction. And then we also include the claim evidence and reasoning statements, which is a really big draw for many, many science curriculum coordinators as uh, students are working to make a claim based upon that guiding question that they're answering. As we all know, we can't just simply state the things. Um, we have to be able to back it up with evidence and we have to be able to connect all of that through reasoning based upon that evidence. Uh, we also really have drawn out the engineering design process, and then we also have included our summative and putting it all together pages, which are more performance-based assessments. I'm going to go back here real fast because uh, I wanted to be able to share. This is an example of a student guide page. So this is an engineering activity. The guiding question is, how can I build a seed that disperses? This is a culminating uh, lesson. Um, our entire first unit is uh, based around pollinators. And so the students are looking at seeds. They're looking at pollinators in general. They're looking at how do seeds travel and how do they reproduce from one to another. And so they're looking at wind. They're looking at this really cool method of jewelweed, which is them shooting their seeds out. Um, maybe they're looking at uh, gravity and how do seeds drop. And so this is an example of when the students are introduced to the engineering design process of ask, think and imagine, plan, create, test and, and improve and evaluate and share. And this is a great example of group work. And so the students are divided into four different groups where you can also divide them into eight groups and they just have um, repeats of the different problems. So one group would have to create a seed that needs to float in water. Another group needs to have a seed that flies in the air. Another group needs to have a seed that sticks to the sock. So they are actually building models. And so within all of that, I skip over that, uh, they are working through this graphic organizer. 
And so what they're doing is that they're taking that question that was provided to them at the beginning. And in their group, they think about the things that they've already studied. And so this is exactly how our engineering process works. Usually you do the research first, and that helps to inform your next process. And so what do we already know about the problem or ideas on how to solve it? And so they're starting to learn at that point of the different methods of seed dispersal. So what are some of the materials that they're going to use? Things might be construction paper. It might be wads of different types of things. It might be um, pipe cleaners. It might be any type of random craft material that can be found into the room. But the idea is that they're looking at the materials. They have an idea of what they need um, to solve and they have their problem that's a focus. Then they start to create their own drawing. And then this is the most important part of engineering is that they make the model, they test it, and hopefully they fail because we really want students to fail. I know that sounds very silly, but we really want students to understand failure is absolutely acceptable because that is how we continue to move forward. And then they improve. So if they did fail, they want to redesign and they want to test again. And we, re we tell teachers that they should do this process twice, if not at least three times to get into this practice of testing and improving and testing and improving, because that is the only way that we move forward as a society in general um, with all of our different types of ideas uh, in, in terms of improving our lives. And then at the end, we have our evaluate and share. And so this is always at the end of every engineering lesson. And so the students are repeating their group problem. They draw the final model of their seed. Uh, and then they talk about what are one to two ways that their model worked and what are one to two ways that their model could be better because they're starting to look at strengths and weaknesses. That's a really big part of this. All right, I'm going to pass it over to Wendy to discuss Nature Unleashed. So Nature Unleashed is our third through fifth grade unit, um, and it aligns with the Missouri Learning Standards. It focuses on Missouri ecosystems, pond, prairie, and forest, looking at specialized structures of both plants and animals within that. And it has a teacher guide, a student guide, which is um, a reader, and then a science notebook where kids are making observations and recording their findings. And so this unit begins with learning about an organism. And from that, it expands into what is that organism's population, its community, so what are its neighbors, the plant or animal neighbors, and then finally, what's that ecosystem? So the ecosystem pulls in the non-living components of that ecosystem. So this is a, yeah, so what you just saw was the student guide page. This is the science notebook page that complements that learning where students are writing what they found in the schoolyard. So instead of just counting the plants and animals like they did in kindergarten, now they're taking that knowledge and expanding it and listing what they found in their schoolyard, how many of it, what were the non-living components. And then they expand this learning into different ecosystems here in Missouri. So an example is the forest and there's a forest poster available. This picture is in the students science um, notebooks so they're reading or science the student guide the reader um, and so like 25 is that big white oak tree or on the left side there's that white breasted nuthatch and so they take these different um, living things from the student guide and then they use that in their science notebook and they're going to write down that species and so the next page Mary Beth um, the next slide um, so they'll write down the species, they'll note if it's a plant or animal, if it's a producer, consumer, herbivore, omnivore, carnivore. So they're working on learning the vocabulary, applying it to specific Missouri species. And then at the bottom, again, they're going to be recording if it's a living or non-living species. With all this knowledge that they learn in the classroom, in the schoolyard, then the next step that we will pay for is a field experience for kids to go visit a forest, a pond, a prairie here in Missouri and see them and learn from them directly. All right, Mary Beth is gonna talk about sixth through eighth grade. Okay, so sixth through eighth grade is aquatics focused. This curriculum is fully aligned to next generation science standards and the uh, Missouri learning science standards. 
Uh, it also really delves into some physical science standards. We actually delve into chemistry uh, as the students are looking at cohesion and adhesion and water molecules in chapter one. And then it starts to delve into earth and space science standards as they are going to be going into water erosion. Uh, and then also how does water move through the system? So we look at water cycle as it's specific to the state of Missouri and then eventually into life science standards where we lo really look into the aquatic food chain and into that energy flow. Uh, we do have our integration of our science notebooks, similar to what Wendy was discussing before with Nature Unleashed, uh, and those are integrated into our field studies. And then a big thing here is project-based learning. I am very proud of what has come from this particular curriculum, simply because there are 11 guide pages that are very well lined out. There are um, all in a way of where it's a graphic organizer. So it helps students to understand locally what are some projects that we can look into. One of the big things might be installing a rain garden. Well, why would you install a rain garden? Where would it go if you were to put a rain garden around your schoolyard? Why would you justify it going there? Or perhaps there might be some erosion problems um, on the schoolyard. And how would you correct that um, that's more integrated into nature um, versus maybe paving it over with something? And so that really brings that uh, to life. Uh, this is an example of our weathering and erosion from lesson two. So the students are looking at the water cycle and then they are actually getting uh, integrated into school year topography and mapping. A lot of students and even adults have issues with elevation in a map and understanding what those lines actually mean. So in sixth, seventh and eighth grade, this is when we're introducing the students to that because this is what impacts what we see in our watershed. And then we also have our runoff and our erosion. So you can see on here that there are pictures. This is Johnson Shut-ins State Park. So we literally like to discuss the different types of um, topographical features that we have in the state of Missouri and bring that to life. Uh, these are different type of cave ecosystems that we have here in the state of Missouri. And this is a very specific picture that's taken from one of our creeks here in Missouri. And this is a picture from Table Rock Lake. So the students are getting introduced to ecosystems across the state of Missouri. Uh, well, like Wendy had mentioned, we have our classroom materials grant. A part of that grant, teachers can purchase a stream table. Um, and within that stream table, the students are able to learn about how a stream is formed and also the benefits of a meandering stream versus a channelized stream. And if you're familiar, Channelized streams are not the most effective because they can flood extremely easily. Uh, and they're also not exactly great in terms of sustaining our aquatic macroinvertebrates or even our fish populations. So we talk about the cause and effect of where it's really great to include our meandering streams and why we want to promote that. So the students are able to see that firsthand as they start to learn about what is headwater, what is a stream channel, what is a stream bed, what is a riparian corridor and the benefits of all of that. Activity 5.2 is biodiversity. It's connecting it all together. This is the fun stuff. This is where we have a lot of our teachers taking their students on a field experience. They're going to a stream, they're going to a pond, they're going to a lake, and they are actively sampling for macroinvertebrates. The reason why they're looking for macroinvertebrates is because our group one taxa, which is listed right here, are very sensitive to pollutants versus our group two taxa and then the group three taxa. If you find group three taxa such as leeches, then that means that you have more of a pollutant tolerant ecosystem. And so it's really nice for students to be able to start to understand why. That also gets connected into water quality testing. So students are looking at pH, they're looking at dissolved oxygen, they're looking at nitrates, and they're testing for that as well. All of that is to connect what they are truly seeing in that stream, in that pond, in that river, and determining why is one part of the stream maybe high quality, and maybe there's a down a uh, river part of the stream that's maybe not as high quality. Well, what is that? What is happening that's in between? Is there runoff that's happening somewhere along the way? So the students are able to really start delving into that field investigation. And then finally, we do have high school, Nature Unbound. This is specific to ecology. So if you know of any high school teachers that are in their life sciences and they are doing an ecology-focused unit this is one of the best curriculums, I am not going to lie, I have ever seen. 
it connects students to conservation careers. It connects them to the natural resources. The culminating activity is literally researching and planning like a resource manager. And the students are building out a resource management plan. They're pulling together everything, biotic, abiotic. They're pulling together water quality testing, soil testing, everything. They're looking at invasive species and the impact of invasive species in their area. So they're really pushing everything that they've learned and that we've discussed in this Discover Nature Schools curriculum overall, and they're pulling it all together into this one natural resource plan. So this is a really neat opportunity for students to really get into all of the sampling data, population data, data analysis, start learning what does biodiversity truly mean and what are we looking for within our Missouri ecosystem? And also what can we actively do on our end as humans? Wendy? Oh, oh sorry, I wasn't on mute. Um, thank you, Mary Beth. So resources are available to all of you. We hope you might be interested. There are teacher guides that can be ordered online as well as all the student books. So all you have to do is go on to the portal, which Mary Beth's going to show you in just a little bit, and request those. They'll be sent directly to your school. But in addition, we hope that you might want to delve a little further. And to do that, we have um, for trained teachers, through the, your conservation educator, you can participate in training. Um, you can get teacher kits for kindergarten, first and second grade. And so these are prepared items that support the um, specific lessons in that. So here's an example of what is in the first grade kit. So kit, first graders are learning about sound and vibration. So we include turkey calls. We have thermometers for outdoor exploration in the schoolyard. There's a bird feeder and bird activity. So there's um, binoculars to support that. In addition, there's essential readings. There's both fiction and nonfiction text. And so all of those books are included as well. And in addition, we really hope that student or teachers will take the students beyond the classroom and the schoolyard and go visit a natural area. So we will provide up to $7 per student transportation reimbursement. Again, this is for trained teachers. And once the training happens, as long as you send in your yearly paperwork for the transportation, you will get to participate um, if you prefer, you can, or so for that's K-2, for third grade through 12th grade, there is money available and the amount of money varies on the unit um, and teachers can spend and purchase anything on the approved list to support that classroom learning instead of that teacher kit. Same deal with the transportation reimbursement though for a field experience. All right. Um, so on the field experience, we ask that teachers take the lead because they are connecting what they've learned in the classroom with this field investigation and opportunity for kids to be out into natural communities. So this is an example from Nature Unhooked, when in middle school kids might do fish sampling, where they're fishing, they're looking for the macroinvertebrates that Mary Beth talked about, um, how they indicate different quality of water, they're doing the water chemical testing, and then they're taking a hike, seeing how the land is used and how that might impact the watershed. Thank you. So I did put up there, if you wanted to take your phone or if you're on your, well, obviously we're all on our computers, but and this is the uh, website to our teacher portal. You can actually order materials for free once you create a teacher portal account. So if you simply type in education.mdc.mo.gov, you will be taken over to our teacher portal. Uh, on that teacher portal, you can order all of your materials. So this is what our homepage looks like. Uh, and you can also share these links with your teachers or anyone who's interested. So this is a teacher portal uh, our programs with all of our Discover Nature schools. Wendy and I ran through every single one of these, of course, except for Nature. So if you are wanting to share information with your teachers, please feel free to share this link with them and they can um, access that. In addition to that, there's different types of videos that they could look through. There's different testimonials um, and then everything is listed down below. 
uh, in regards to our resources, ordering pass through materials, once you create your account and once you log in, you'll be able to actually order. And I'm going to log in through my teacher account here. You can actually order your materials and we will send you it to the hundreds. We will send it to you in the tens, however many it is that you need. Um, so if your teachers are interested and they want to go ahead and get a printable student guide and a teacher guide to look through, or if you want to look through it yourself, you will click on classroom materials order form. Classroom size can just be 20, 25, however it might be. Uh, and then you just click through what it is that you want. So if you know that you're just wanting one student guide for Bears for Reasons and a teacher guide, you'll just click on that. If you want every one of these, you can click one, one. If you know that you've got folks that are in a class with nearly 25 students, and you're like, I know that they're going to want 30, they can put that in there. It takes about seven to 10 business days to arrive. And then at the very bottom is our submit button. Uh, in addition to that, at the very top is our grant page. So if you're wanting to view uh, those different kit loan agreements or the grant guidelines, that is all available for you to be able to view. And then finally, Wendy had talked about reaching out to your local MDC conservation educator. And that is going to be underneath your contact page. So whatever uh, county you are a part of, so for instance, I used to live down in Howell County. Um, I know that Sam Stewart is going to be my conservation educator. So I can see his email address and his phone number, and I can reach out to him to arrange a teacher workshop for my teachers in that area. And our folks are wonderful. They will come to you. They will come to your classroom. They will talk to your teachers about how to effectively use their schoolyard uh, and really taking their students outside and making connections into these uh, lessons. So that actually concludes. And I, what I can do is actually share that into our, our uh, let's see here, into the chat here just so that everybody has access to that as well there you go and if anybody has any questions at all regarding this i'm going to actually display our information up on the uh, page here and you are always welcome to reach out to myself or to wendy and we would be more than happy to provide that information to you yeah i think i think i I have a quick question. I was on the portal. I already have an account, but I was trying to see if I could order just a copy of all of the things so that I could have it here at central office so that I could have some time to speak with my buildings, specifically, I would say K-5. Um, but as I go through and I just put like one of everything, should I, I mean, well, first of all, I don't even know if it'll let me submit, but if I hit classroom of one, because I really don't want to order a bunch of materials before we would know we would want to purchase yeah. class sets. And honestly, Tracy, if you want to go ahead, we just need a number in that classroom size. So if you want to just put classroom of one, that's absolutely fine. And then just go ahead and place your order. We have homeschool parents that can order these materials as well. And of course, their classroom might be of one, two or three. So we're very accustomed to uh, smaller classroom sizes too. And the other issue that I'm running into, and I ran into this when I was trying to create my account, there isn't anything like district office level when I'm searching for schools, I have to pick a school and not all of our schools are there. And so it's not allowing me to put in that, like just put in Lebanon and our three school district and put my address. It keeps sending me an mm -hmm. error message. Mm -hmm. And then tech and career, sir. So what I would do is just say the Missouri school I teach is not listed. And I would check on okay. that and then I would write the name of the school here and then I would write your facility name and then just manually fill out what address it is that you want it to be sent to. I'll try that and see here. I, that's exactly where I was going yeah. to next. See if it'll let yeah. me. Uh, it's thinking. So maybe it will. Yep. Okay. Perfect. <laughs> All right. Great. Excellent.
And Valerie, if you're, if everyone on here is okay with it, since our the group on here is a little bit smaller, I was kind of hoping to get everybody's emails. And then what we can do is also share these links with you. And then we can also get you connected directly to your conservation educator in your area. And then you can always reach out again to Wendy and ourselves by reply all. And we would be more than happy to supply uh, information to you. Okay, do you want, we could just utilize the chat if folks oh, want to- uh, Valerie, isn't it? there we go. Um, if they want, yeah, there we go. And then you can connect directly. Well, thank you so much um, to Wendy and Mary Beth for sharing all of this with us today. Um, it is one of my favorite programs. And like you said, so often in our science resources, uh, we're learning about other continents. And there's so much right here in our own backyard for kids to learn about and to explore. And um, I also, I love what really resonated with me today was what you were saying about the nine through 12 and how that connects to career opportunities um, because our conservation department is top notch. So thank you so much. Um, and everyone on here today, thanks for coming. Everybody have a wonderful day. Thank you again, we appreciate it. Thank you.